Hey Google, snooze. Ten more minutes. Huh? Ah, wait, wait. Oh, what got me? It's hardware three upgrade day. I can't sleep in. Hey, it's Tesla Connect. As you can tell from that intro, I'm really excited. It's finally here today. It's my hardware three upgrade day. I'm on my way to uh, the Tesla Mississauga, Ontario service center. Got an appointment for 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm sure it's gonna take a few hours, um, but of course I'm gonna document it and I'm gonna show you the story. Fingers crossed for a great experience. I'll be back. All right, so while we're on our way here, let's talk about expectations. I don't have a lot of expectations today for the hardware three upgrade. In Canada, basically, I'm gonna see pylons and probably some improvements in terms of the smoothness of autopilot and that kind of stuff. At least that's what I'm hearing from other owners in Canada who have uh, received their hardware three upgrade. Of course, my friends in the US, uh, they get uh, traffic lights and stop signs and other goodies that we just don't have yet in Canada and probably not in Europe or Australia or anywhere else. So uh, kudos to uh, you know the Americans for being out there on the bleeding edge. All right, um, so with this being said, with my minor, I guess, expectations around today, what's really got me pumped is what's coming i just i've said it before something big is coming and you're going to need hardware three for it so that's really what today is all about uh, i'm hoping this next software upgrade that the big one is coming and i'm going to be ready for it so that's what i'm hoping for let's keep going Okay, I've arrived at the uh, Tesla Service Center in Mississauga, Ontario. Still super excited. Bit of a long drive. The closest service center to me is this one here, and it's about 100 kilometers, 60 miles uh, from my house. So it's not much. It's in a, an industrial, in industrial? It's in an industrial <laughs> um, area, and it's really you know, not that's super nice but uh, let's go out we'll take a look i probably won't be able to film inside uh but i'll keep you updated somehow on the progress all right so this is it as i mentioned it's not really a lot to speak of it's just in an industrial area um yeah that's it there's nothing more i can show you this is not the uh the nicest place on the planet but um, they do a good job here though. It's gonna take about four or five hours so they gave me a loaner car which is fantastic. It's this nice blue one here. I guess I'll just uh, kind of took the day off work but I'll just uh, I don't know maybe I'll go down to Buffalo <laughs> and uh, just have a good time. What do we got? We've got the uh, dual motor which is great. I have the rear wheel drive so this will be a treat to uh, to be driving the dual motor uh, and everything looks good on it 
I just picked up my car from the Tesla service center. I'm actually still here. Uh, so you're seeing this real time with me. I had my hardware three upgrade uh, done. It was booked in yesterday. They ended up needing to keep the car. So I had to loan her overnight. It's about 11 o'clock in the morning, Toronto time right now. Um, as you can see on my screen here, uh, I have the full self driving computer. So they're not calling it hardware um, three. I think that uh, news came out a while ago. So that's actually the name they're calling uh, hardware three. It's called full self driving computer. So um, yeah, I didn't get the latest update. I thought they would have put the latest update on my car um, before picking it up. Uh, sad face. So that means that I'm the best I'm going to see is traffic cones. I won't see any stop lights or stop signs uh, because I need the uh, the next update to be able to do that, which I think has started rolling out. At least in Canada. I mean, everywhere else. Um, well, I shouldn't say everywhere else in the world. I think just the U.S. has the stop sign and the and the lights, uh, but a few more countries it's rolling out to now, including Canada. All right, let's go for a drive and see if there's any difference uh, on uh, Navigate on Autopilot or anything like that. Uh, some viewers have said uh, it's uh, some viewers. Some um, articles I've read have said that uh, the Autopilot is a little bit smoother. Lane changes are a little bit smoother and quicker. Uh, I'm going to find that out. So let's go for a drive. All right, we are rolling up to a stop sign here. Let's, so I'm not getting the stop sign, but you just saw there like a cone, a uh, traffic cone, but there's no traffic cones. Um, okay, this is interesting. So no stop sign, which doesn't surprise me because I know I need that next um, update. But see, I wonder if that's the fire hydrant and seeing it as a cone. See, there's another fire hydrant there. So fire hydrants seem to be coming up as cones. Okay, this is my first experience with um, with any of the visualizations, so I don't know if that is uh, something expected where the um, where the fire hydrants show up as uh, <laughs> as cones. Wow. Okay. Um, we're going to hit the highway, and uh, we're going to see. I just want to do this. Uh, stoplight here again I'm not expecting a visualization I don't have the software update but just getting a feel for what if anything is different with hardware 3 um, here in Canada uh, so far not much <laughs> alright I will see you again when I get onto the freeway Okay, one thing that I've noticed, and I've heard this from other people, is I lost all my settings. All my settings gone with the hardware 3 upgrade. Um, even though you ask, can you keep my settings? So I can't even use um, autopilot right now. You can see here that it is still calibrating. Um, and yeah, until that finishes calibrating, I won't be able to test any of those features. So I, I just wanted to chime in just briefly here just to say you're going to lose all your settings. Um, that's everything from your seat settings, your mirrors, your steering wheel, um, your, uh, your Wi-Fi, your, uh, your Bluetooth phone. Your Bluetooth key will still work, but as far as the pairing of your phone, it's all gone. All those settings, gone. Okay, uh, I'll be back again shortly. Okay, I'm back. Uh, the autopilot cameras has, have finished uh, calibrating and uh, another interesting setting <laughs> that also gets wiped is all of your previous autopilot and navigator and autopilot settings. So, uh, and uh, very interesting, you, you can't turn those on when you're driving. So I actually had to pull off the freeway and just get that sorted. Uh, I had to re-enable autopilot, re-enable auto steer, um, basically a bunch of settings. So just keep that in mind uh, when you get your hardware three upgrade and uh, you know, when you set about, you're gonna have to go through that calibration process. If you're on a freeway or anywhere, you're gonna have to pull over and, uh, and re-enable all that stuff. Okay, so now that um, everything's enabled, uh, 
uh, how does it feel? Uh, you know, it's really hard to pinpoint whether it's feeling different at all. I want to say that there's less lane wobble um, just in the short time that I've been using it. And other than that, uh, it looks like there's a little bit more lanes in the visualization. I, I could be wrong there, but yeah, it, it does look a little bit different to me. But um, yeah, I think the real kind of good stuff is going to happen when the next software update uh, happens. At least we'll have the updated visualizations. And I think they're calling it full self-driving. Um, what do they call it? Full self-driving um, preview? <laughs> yeah, I think that's what they're calling it. So I will have that in the next release. I know that the Americans, you guys already have it. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the rest of the world doesn't have that yet. So we're waiting on this next release. Okay, um, that's basically it. Uh, you know, I'll chime in again. I'll just want, I'll just do, we'll do an interchange on Navigate on Autopilot and uh, see if there's any difference there. Uh, let me try lane change. Whoa, okay. Um, yeah, that is a bit different, uh, the lane change there. Uh, let's go back. Okay, it's it's definitely more responsive, uh, the lane change, uh, no doubt. Like some things you kind of wonder whether or not it's an improvement, you don't really know. That I felt right away, right? And, and definitely now that, you know, I've driven a few more minutes now, the wobbling in the lane is practically all but gone. So those are the two things that I've noticed right now so far immediately. Uh, more, uh, I guess, quicker to react lane changes and uh, wobbles practically eliminated. Okay, I'll be back when we do an interchange. All right, we are coming up on an interchange. This is gonna be my first navigate on autopilot with the full self-drive computer, the so-called hardware three. Um, and we will see if there is any kind of a difference. Oh, okay. That was not good. This looks like the reduced front radar visibility. As you can see, the weather is kind of crap, but it's not like it's a blizzard. Uh, that's very unusual. There should be no snow caught up in where the radar is. I don't know why I've, uh, I've lost that. Um, so looks like I will not be able to use navigate on autopilot um, until I don't know until the, the radar has visibility again okay I just pulled over and uh, I checked there's no obstruction uh, where the radar is in the front uh, looks like I have uh, navigate on autopilot back uh, let's enable that uh, while I was uh, pulled over I went over all of my settings again and uh, you know, literally, I had to redo everything, including your your Mad Max settings. So, sorry, your um, lane auto lane change settings. I just put it on Mad Max. Uh, I had to adjust, um, you know, whether I want the confirmation of a lane change because the default is yes. Uh, so I just went through all of that. We should be good to go. Let's do it. Okay. So we've got it on Mad Max. Okay, and it is taking the lane uh, very smooth. I'm going to throw the, well, that's not going to be very helpful, is it? <laughs> Let me get rid of that. Okay. Doing another lane change. So the question is, for those of you that have hardware 2.5 or hardware 2.0, um, in the case of an S or an X, you know, is there a difference? Um, yeah, I do think there's a difference on the lane changes. They they feel smoother and and quicker. Um, so I'm going to say yes to that. What else, if anything, that I've noticed? 
not a heck of a lot, right? And as I said, that's not going to come until the next software update for us Canadians and uh, Europeans and, and I think Australians as well will get this uh, full self-drive preview uh, in the next release. Uh, until then, there's not much else to say, right? Um, yeah. Well, I'm glad I have it. So I'm glad that, that I do have it. I'm ready for the, ne the next update, software update. Um, I'm gonna conclude this by saying you're not gonna see a lot of uh, difference until more of the full self-drive um, capabilities are rolled out. But it's good to have, and it's good to be ready. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Click the like button. If you don't like the video, just tell me why in the comments. I mean, I, I listen to feedback, so uh, I'm happy to hear that. Uh, you know, if there's something I could be doing better, just let me know. Tesla Connect, over now.